I think most of the Apex community can agree that hitting Diamond and above is considered a huge milestone, and a big reason for that is the average player sits in about Platinum 4, so most of the Apex player base has never even seen Diamond or above. Some people don't know where they are going wrong or just what exactly they need to look for in order to improve and break through that Platinum Plateau. So hello everyone, I'm your host with the mostest 8 second gaming and in today's video I'm going to be breaking down even more more tips to help you climb ranked and hit diamond or above. But just quickly before we hop into the tips, if you guys are looking to climb ranks and get better at Apex, you'll definitely want to subscribe to our channel. We post daily, highly educational videos aimed at making you the best Apex player you can be. So smash that sub button and let's hop into the tips. And starting off, we have tip number one, and that's to start no filling pub games. There is simply no better way to improve at Apex in the way that no filling pubs does. While there are tools like Aim Labs, Kovacs, and even in the firing range, those are mainly for your aim. And I do agree, they are fantastic tools. They can't help you get the game sense that no filling pubs does. Those tools are for warming up your aim, getting you into the groove, and psyching you up for the rank grind to come. And in the firing range, you get a little bit more aim training on top of some movement practice and can help you in learning and perfecting some stuff like wall bouncing or tap strafing, but no filling pubs you get to practice your aim movement, game sense, fighting skills, positioning, and much more. And now some people may be sitting there saying, well, why don't I just play regular pubs? Why the no fill? And that's a fair question. Most people would think that because ranked you have a full team, why not practice with a full team? But I'm willing to bet you've been grinding ranked and you've probably felt like you don't even have teammates. You've got the dynamic duo of Helen Keller and Ray Charles running around causing noise and drawing teams to you. With no fill pubs, you'll be training yourself for for those moments, because instead of trying to save them, you'll be more comfortable in 1v3 scenarios and be able to carry yourself. And before you ask or assume, I have so looked you to masters before. I know what it's like being in these situations, and I'm sure glad that I know my way around disadvantageous fights. Going into these no fill pubs, you'll have no RP on the line and don't have to worry about dying, so you can put yourself into uncomfortable spots in order to learn from mistakes. If you never get into bad spots, you never know how to get out of them and die a lot in ranked because of that. You want to start getting into the mindset of, if I go down, the game is over, because this will help you carry your team in ranked games. By not going down and not putting yourself into bad situations, you won't have to put a lot of reliance on your randoms and will be able to win a lot more because of that. You are the only constant on your team when solo queuing. You can't control how your team will play no matter what, so instead of being upset about that, learn to control yourself and this will yield higher results. I suggest starting off with duos, learn how to control the flow of fights with one less opponent. It will help you with stress and not freaking out in fights. Then once you're able to confidently take on two people at once, start working your way into solo trios. It's how I personally worked my way into solo trios and I was actually able to pull off a 4.7k damage game as Valkyrie as a solo player now. After learning and gaining experience from these games, you won't have to worry about the people you get matched with or if one or two of them die in games because you aren't planning on playing around them anyway, setting you up for success. Now we can move into tip number two and that's playing around the meta. Apex right now is in a very balanced state. Most guns and legends are viable up to all ranks and some players do very well with them. Some of these players at the top level are able to take any legend they want into games and still do very well. But these players are really exceptions, not the rule. Every season has had its broken legends and guns. Season 10 the broken gun was the L-Star, season 11 was the Rampage before they disabled it temporarily. And we have covered stuff like this on the channel multiple times, talking about team comps and what to be looking for when building your own team comp plus a legend tier list. But I still see comments from time to time of people saying that you should just play whatever legend you want or use whatever guns you like, and while this is true to some degree, I still don't recommend it. A lot of weaker legends leave holes in your team comps and can allow other teams to exploit it and kill you easily. It is best to play around what characters are strong at the moment and use those to your advantage. That way you won't have as many of those holes in your team comp in order to be exploited and allow you to climb in games a lot easier. And if you aren't sure what characters or weapons are strong in the current metas, make sure to check our tier list. We will be updating them as new patches and seasons drop to keep everyone in the loop. Now jumping into our next tip, this is one that doesn't just affect low tier players. I see this all the way from bronze to masters and even have watched predators do 
do this. This is tip number three, and that's to stop looking for fights. They will come to you. Apex Legends is currently a very third, fourth, fifth, sixth party heavy meta, and if you start a fight, unless you're able to end it within 15 to 25 seconds, you will probably have multiple other teams coming to fight you as well. So in a game mode like Ranked, it very much isn't worth starting a fight unless you absolutely have to. How many games have you played where you haven't seen at least one team? Because teams are looking for fights and eventually down the line you will be able to get kills and stack up your multiplier. Don't stress over not getting kills throughout the game because you will still have a ton of opportunities late game with the proper positioning. One of the biggest tips that has helped me in ranked is unless you land with the team and fight early, it isn't worth taking a fight in mid game. You're just going to get third partied and die. You are essentially just ringing a dinner bell for all the hungry apes to come and get you. So even if you only kill one team and win the game, you are better off than killing multiple and dying 15th. Because over the long run of your ranked career, you will understand how to put your yourself into spots to pick up more kills in game safely and will gain a ton more points doing so. So stop running at every fight you can, you're just throwing your points down the drain. Now diving into tip number 4, this is one of my personal favorites. This is to VOD review your own games. Now I know some people are probably thinking I'm crazy, but just hear me out. You are watching this video because you want to improve and learn how to get better at Apex. So why not take the extra 5-10 to 10 minutes it takes to review a bad game you had in order to identify bad habits habits you make or patterns in your gameplay that lead to you dying. I can almost guarantee that everyone watching has at least one bad habit they do every game and if you start VOD reviewing you'll easily see it right before you die. Because if you can see it when you watch your games back, other teams probably saw it at that time and that's what led to you losing the fight. This is something I did a lot when I was grinding tournaments and you can see the notes that I take on screen now. Because I was streaming, I would go into my editor and highlight the game, link it on the document for my team to see and then start going over my details. I would put in our team comp, our drop spot, and then I would go into notes about the game, bullet points about mistakes or good plays we made and then at the end I would talk about the main takeaways from that game. Now I'm not saying you have to go this in depth, this was for professional play and was very over the top. All you need to do is watch back your games and see for yourself, maybe take a note or two on the mistakes you make so over time you can see if you make them frequently and fix it. Over the course of doing this, you'll see huge changes to your own gameplay and be able to actively fix your own issues and grow as a player exponentially. Diamond, Masters, and even Predator is a lot more achievable than people think, and if you've made it this far into the video, you are serious about wanting to improve and start climbing in Apex. All it takes is a few changes to your mindset and playstyle and you'll start seeing bigger and better RP gains in your sessions. And just as a finishing touch, if you are a low elo player, gold to platinum, and are willing to send footage of your game into me in order to VOD review for the upcoming Game Leap Apex Legends website, so I can show people that are in similar spots what mistakes someone in that rank will make, please join our Discord and send me a message. The link will be in the description down below. Thank you all for watching. Once again, I'm 8 Second Gaming, and I will see you in the next one.